Welcome to Summit TV. Whether you're at home with the family, on your break at work, tuning in with your small group, or watching with your pet, we hope that today's service brings life and joy to your location. These days, church may seem a little different, but it can feel the same. Click the share button on this video or send a friend the link so they can watch too. Let's get ready for an awesome time. So here we go.
continue to worship our God today.
joining us today. My name is Melissa. You know, this broadcast and all we do for our community and the world would not be possible without your giving. While we're not meeting in person, your online giving is appreciated now more than ever. When you give, you empower Summit to continue to impact our community, our nation, and the world. So thank you. There are multiple ways for you to give. You can give online by clicking the link in the description box or via text using the information that's found on your screen. Just text the amount you'd like to give and the keyword summit to the number 45777. If Summit Church is your home, we're asking you to continue to give just like when we gather together. Whether it's online, text, or a check in the mail, let's do this right now together. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for every person with a heart to give today. We thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, and we want to be faithful with what you have given us. We know that out of our giving, we make a difference in our community and our world. Father, thank you for using our resources to impact others with the love of God. That's why today I can give cheerfully because I know I'm making a difference and you promised the giver that you would always supply our every need. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Well, in just a few moments, pastor's gonna come out and share his final message in the series, Built to Last. Now, let's check out the weekend update and see what's happening right here at Summit. Good morning, Summit. My name is Megan and I serve on the worship team. One thing we always looked forward to in our in-person gatherings was meeting our first time guests. So if you've never joined us in person, but you're here with us for the first time online, we wanna welcome you. We'd love to connect with you. Text the phrase Summit Connect to 94000 or click the connection card link in the description box and take a moment to fill it out. We're here to answer your questions in real time and offer you more information about Summit Church. Your first step to getting involved at Summit is starting point. This is our four step process that's flexible so you can complete the steps in any order. Starting point includes learning about the history and mission of Summit, as well as how you can join a team to participate in weekly services. Steps one and four are offered today via Zoom, an online video platform that you can access right from where you are. Register for today's step by emailing melissa at summitchurchdc.com. Community is key during COVID-19. Summit makes it easy to find friendships and have strong godly relationships, even during a time of separation. We invite you to join a virtual Summit small group online. Groups are meeting across the DMV virtually using social media, Zoom, and Google Hangouts to support one another and grow together in a community. Visit our website to get started. If water baptism is your next step, our team is ready to help. We are baptizing adults, teens, and children on Summit TV each week. This is an awesome outward declaration to show your inner decision for Christ. Click the link in our description box and our team will contact you soon for an upcoming date. We are so proud of all of the 2020 grads out there. If you're graduating this spring, register online to be recognized for your academic achievements. Visit summitchurchdc.com slash events to let our team know. We've got content for your entire family every week. Kids Life TV is our weekly service for children to enjoy straight from home. Parents, episode 10 of Kids Life TV is premiering today on Facebook and YouTube following each service of Summit TV. Our teens meet up on Instagram every Sunday night for Summit Youth Live. The SY team has a service prepared just for our middle and high school students tonight at 6 p.m. Search Summit Youth DC on Instagram and watch the story with a friend tonight. At Summit Church, we are all about others. Serving is a huge part of our mission. We have serve opportunities coming up as we show God's love to our community during COVID-19. If you wanna be a part, shoot us a text or email and our team will contact you. Summit Church's mission is to create a life-giving community of changed lives through the love of God and faith in Jesus Christ. Our team is committed to helping you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Let us know how we can help you in your relationship with God by messaging us or shooting us an email at info at
Well, happy Sunday, everybody, and welcome back to Summit TV. No matter where you are, thank you for tuning in today. This is a special weekend because tomorrow is Memorial Day. And of course, we want to take just a minute to say thank you to all of our fallen heroes that have made it possible for us to have the freedoms that we enjoy today. As a minister of the gospel, the price that was paid so that we could continue to preach this gospel, there is no way we can pay them back except to show honor. And so I just up front want to say thank you. And if this is your first time Summit Experience, I want to welcome you and thank you for spending part of your Sunday with us. My name is Eddie Trayers, and I'm the lead pastor here at Summit. And I want you to know that my staff who are here every day and the Summit Dream Team who come in and serve to make this broadcast possible, we are committed to staying connected with you. And we thank God for this technology that's been ongoing and made available for us to do just that. Now it's your turn. We want you to stay connected with us. So whatever platform you're using today, take some time during the broadcast to interact with us. Use the comment box or message us and tell us about your TV experience today, where you're watching from. We love to hear from people outside of the state and even outside of the country. We love pictures. We love comments. We love to know about your Summit TV experience. So engage with the team who's standing by ready to interact with you today. The way that we're growing the church right now is you are being an inviter. So hit that share button, tag your friends, start a watch party, and invite some people to join in today. You know, we're reaching more people today than ever. And that's because you've used the power of the share button to welcome others to watch Summit TV. We realize that we are still in the middle of some stay-at-home orders. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. We're hearing some uh, easing of these stay-at-home orders, but there are still people that are under pressure. There are still people experiencing anxiety. And I think the biggest pandemic we have right now is fear. If you're dealing with any feelings right now and you're watching this broadcast and you would love to speak to somebody, all you have to do is text Summit Prayer to 94000. We'll receive your prayer request. We'll talk with you. It is a private way for us to be able to interact with you no matter who you are, whether you consider Summit Church your home or this is your first time experience, we would love to interact with you. We've continued to be the church even with the doors closed. We've been able to reach out into our community in ways that we have never reached out before. If you would like to be an in-person here to serve, we would love for you to join us. All you have to do is text Summit Serves to 94000 and someone will interact with you and connect you with our next serve opportunity. And we have a lot of those coming up. You know, this May has been pretty epic month here on Summit TV. We started the month on week three of our series, Built to Last. And then we switched gears on the 10th when my wife, Pastor Stephanie, she brought it. First, by debuting this beautiful white box that we're in now for Mother's Day, and then reminding us to go vertical in her message, The Right Perspective. And last weekend on the 17th, Pastor Rick Bizet was with us from New Life Church. He spoke from his heart on keeping a forward-looking vision for 2020. He and I sat right here. We had a great time speaking to you. You know, right in the middle of a pandemic, the first few weeks of spring here at Summit have been very power-packed. If you've not seen Pastor Stephanie's or Pastor Rick's messages, I encourage you to go back into the video archive and take some time to listen to what they had to say. You know, my hope is that you are continuing to stay engaged with our online presence and our in-person community outreaches. You know, I spoke with a mom who was here serving last week, and she has four children, and they're all in school, and of course, she's home schooling them now, and her kids told her that they missed serving at Summit. I can't tell you how much I loved hearing those words coming from those young people. They did end up connecting with the Summit team and finding a time and a place to serve here at the church. And you know what I believe? I believe the church is the hope of the world, and Summit's mission of creating a life-giving community of changed lives 
through the love of God and faith in Jesus Christ, it provides hope to our community. So I want to thank you for being a part of this amazing church, both virtually and in the reality through online giving and personal serving. You know, today we begin part four of our series, Built to Last. I'm excited to get back to this series because there were still some things on my uh, heart and in my message that I would love to be able to share with you. So I believe we're going to wrap this up today and we're going to have some visuals and see how this turns out. But we have a lot of things that we discussed about, beginning with our main text that we built this message on, and it's found in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24 through 29, it says, just, these are Jesus' words. He said, the words that I speak to you are words to build a life on. If you work the words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who dug deep and laid the foundation of his house on bedrock. When the rain poured down and the river burst its banks and crashed against the house, nothing could shake it. Why? Because it was built to last. I want you to think about what he's saying. When we give ourselves to being built to last, we're saying we're going to dig deep and we're going to lay a foundation. That's not digging into the earth, the dirt. We're digging into God's word. We're digging into his presence. We're getting to know him, who he is, and let his character become our character. But then there's the other side. When we don't dig deep, when we don't look to his word, and it goes on to say this, but those who hear my words and do not follow them are like an unwise carpenter who builds a house without preparing a foundation. When the floods come, the house falls down easily and is completely destroyed. You know, we do not want your life I do not want my life to be in a position that it's easily washed away by things that are going on in the world, the pressures of life. And he is giving us, God is giving us instructions on how we can be built to last. So in week one, we'll just do a little review here. In week one, we studied what makes up a good foundation in our lives. Then week two, we studied the condition of the soil of our heart to ensure it will support the foundation from shifting and crumbling. The ground has everything to do with what is on top of it. And then in week three, we studied building the top on top of the foundation, the part of our lives people can see. We we would call that in the construction industry, the framing. And I want to continue with that thought this week. We're going to Go over to a scripture in Hebrews, and I want you to notice in this scripture how God's word framed up or or built up the universe. It says here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, by faith and trust in God, we understand that the universe was framed or put into order by the word of God. So what was seen was not made out of things which are visible. That can be just a little uh, wordy there at the end. I want to read that again. So that what is seen, what you're seeing me right now, you're seeing the trees outside, we see the mountains, we see the sky, we see the water, was not made out of things which are visible. The things that are not visible are the word. This is how things were framed up. And so we can go over to the very beginning in Genesis chapter 1, and look what it says. It says, in the beginning, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the face of the waters, and God said. Here's God using his words to change this situation. He said, let there be light, and there was light. There was what God said. And that's going to happen in our lives. Not just any words, but we speak what God said. And that will cause our lives to get out of a formless, empty, and darkness state. It was God's words that framed up the universe. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to go from our beautiful white box over into a little workshop that I prepared next door. And let's use some of our framing ideas to get an idea of what it means to frame up our world. Come on. 
Let's walk next door. Welcome to my workshop. As you see on this table, we have the example that we used a couple weeks back of what it means to have a good foundation. And it begins with good soil. And we've talked about what's the mixture of your soil. You can see the different levels of soil, different types of soil. And we talked about doing a core drill, finding out if this soil has the ability to hold up a foundation and then that will hold up the building. We take cement, we take sand, and we take aggregate. We mix these components together and th that creates a mixture. And then when you add water, this is the spark that ignites the concrete to begin to dry and to harden. And over time, it gets harder and harder and harder. And we have our foundation on top of our soil. We said that they use different sizes of aggregate or different types of chemicals within the concrete for stronger concrete to build a building much taller like in New York City. Then we also talked about the different layers of what is all mixed up in this. And we can say these are the things from a spiritual perspective that take the place of these elements when it comes to the scripture. These are the things that should be on our foundation. Bible study, serving, joy, giving, small group. And the list goes on and on of how we mix our foundation up so that we can grow in Christ. And sometimes we have a mixed up foundation. You know, we can have Bible study and an addiction and joy and a bad habit and small groups. God doesn't want us to have a mixed foundation. When we start in Christ, we have this type of foundation, but eventually we turn things around. And when we do, we have a solid foundation. But today we're talking about framing up our world. And so we have an example over here. I just, it just so happens I happen to have my tool belt sitting here. Can you imagine that? So I'm going to strap on my tool belt real quick. And we're going to go over here and use these two by fours laying on the ground as an example of what it means to frame up our world. So we've already done some work ahead of time and you can see that these walls are exactly how we frame up our world or our universe. As we begin to speak the right words that God wants us to speak, as we begin to honor him with our lives, the next thing you know, things begin to take shape. And they take shape because God said he's building us into a strong building. And you can see... That this framing is beginning to look like something. Again, we're talking about our words. These two by fours represent his word coming out of our mouth, building our lives into something that will last, built to last. So if you'll bear with me, as I throw a few screws in here. This is what framing looks like already put together. This is what framing looks like when it's not put together. So we're going to real quickly use this as a demonstration to put our world together. These are our words. God told us we could frame up our world. So I'm going to take a minute here and actually, in a smaller sense, put together what we've put together there. So just bear with me for a minute as we slam this together. And if some of you are wondering why these nails are going in so easy, it's because I pre-drilled the holes. Either that or I'm an amazing hammer operator.
What am I saying about my life? What does my life look like? Is it something that people can drive by or see in the office because of the way I talk? What do they see when they see me? Here, we have something that resembles a building. It doesn't have to be perfect, but what we're doing is we're demonstrating what we do with our words. Every day, we're building our lives. Every day, something is being said that adds to our house that people can see. I know this is rough, but I wanted to show you a little time, a little effort, cutting all the boards, and what do you have? Something that resembles a house. So there you go. Framing up our worlds. Well, what do you say we go back over to our box? Get back to the message. So now that we've built our house, we've showed you, you know what? It took some design. That brings me to my first point, and that is you are an architect. We are architects of our own lives. Because you were created by God, who is a master designer, you have the power to create or design just like an architect. As a matter of fact, the world you live in right now your own personal space, your universe is a byproduct of the words you tell yourself and the ones others tell you. The byproduct of what I just built was a matter of me putting it together. Really is kind of rough, but I threw it together quickly. It did have the form of a house. You see, it was God's word that framed up the universe, and it will be his words coming out of our mouths that will frame up our own amazing universe or our reality. You know, as parents, I have two children. They're grown now. But any parents out there, we have the power to frame up a world of hope and love for our kids. Or we can choose to frame up a world of despair and discouragement. But this is a very true statement. We can be sure of one thing. Our children are listening, even when we don't think that they are. And that's why God wants us to have these words in our home that bring life and spirit into the house. Jesus made a statement over in the book of John, chapter 6 and verse 63. He said, it's the spirit that gives life, talking about the Holy Spirit. The flesh, this thing here, is pretty much useless. And then he's talked about the words that he was bringing while he lived on earth. He said, the words that I have spoken to you, which are written down in the New Testament, what are they? Spirit and life. They're spirit words. And spirit words always bring life. And the truth is, is that when we speak out spirit words, we're lifting, we're building, we're creating a universe and a reality that's pleasant and set up for success. As a matter of fact, there is more power in one word from God than all the power of your enemies combined. Why? Because God's words are the only spirit and life words in the universe. So number one, you are the architect. You design your space. But sometimes where we are, we don't like. Maybe we're just coming into knowing what God is about. That brings me to my second point. Look at this. Because of the word of God, you can reframe your space. You can change your reality. You have the power to reframe right where you are right now. Instead of participating in conversations that are destructive and that are full of gossip and cynicism or criticism, you know what you need to do? Reframe it with the Word of God. 
When the space you're in seems lost and hopeless, reframe the space with your words from hopeless to hopeful. When a conversation that you're involved in is, is a downer, choose to walk away from it or choose to reframe it. The Word of God in your mouth will help you to change your reality. Look over here in Proverbs chapter 18. It says, your words can be as satisfying as fruit. I love fruit. I'm a vegetable and fruit lover. As pleasing the food that can fill your stomach. Everybody likes when their stomach's full of good food. The tongue can speak words that bring life or death. Another translation says that, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And those who love to talk must be ready to accept what it brings. You know, there's nothing wrong with conversation. There's nothing wrong with talking. But there is something wrong with talking too much. There is something wrong with talking in a way that is not helpful, in a way that's destructive. And as a matter of fact, you can have kind words, nice words, but we're talking about spirit words. We're talking about life-giving words. I heard about this little boy who didn't know anything about an echo, and he was standing on the edge of a valley, and he began to cry across the valley, who's there? And the echo answered him, who's there? And the child could not see who spoke those words, and he asked, who are you? And it came back, who are you? And the boy thought, there is somebody over there teasing me. So he shouted, please stop it. And of course, the echo came back, please stop it. And just as the child was becoming bewildered and upset about the echo, his mother explained to him that no one was trying to tease him. It was only an echo or a reflection of his own voice that was coming back to him. The child thought about this for a minute. And then he said, I love you. And take a guess what came back. The words came back, I love you. And the child enthusiastically shouted, you are so good. And of course, the compliment was returned to him. The child became happier and more enthusiastic about life because of his own words that were reflected back to his own soul. We can be sure what we say and how we say it will come back to us. That's why we build our life. You know, God talked about the heart, the soil, the foundation, studying the word, worship, church attendance, serving, small groups, all of these things, being a witness, growing up spiritually. Part of growing up spiritually is changing the way that we talk. I read this quote. It takes more than bread and water to truly live. We know that Jesus said that man can't live by bread alone. But it takes a steady stream of God's word coming out of our mouth. If you truly want to live, then be a person who's changing your foundation and your soil with the word of God. Let a steady stream of God's word come out of your life and you will truly live. As Christ followers, life is about transformation. It's about real change. And transformation and change always includes changing through demolition, tearing up. And demolition is always dirty and it always pretty much hurts. But maybe it's time for all of us to face the music. Maybe it's time for us to look in the mirror and judge ourselves and say, what are my words all about? As a matter of fact, ask yourself this question. What do your words reveal about you? What are my words saying? When people hear me, are they hearing life? Are they hearing spirit? Or are they hearing something else? And I'm not just talking about a little bit. I'm talking about all of your words. The ones you speak to your friends, the ones you tell yourself, and the ones you listen to. If you took inventory of your words, what you say, what do you say that's most important about your life? You know, I read this quote. And I think it's something worth talking to you about. Words are like eggs dropped from a great height. You can no more call them back than ignore the mess they leave when they fall by Judy Picot. You know, maybe it's time for us to reframe our spaces and change our space with our words. Why? Because once they're out, it is hard to stop them 
and they can make a big mess. So number one, you're an architect. You're the designer of your space. Number two, if you don't like what you see, you have the power to reframe your space. And number three, quality is better than quantity. Quality is better than quantity. You know, having large spaces, open spaces can feel good, but you know they all need maintenance. They have to be taken care of. And so, if it's true, words are powerful, then more words equal more impact, right? The more space, the bigger that we create. Well, of course not. More words doesn't mean more impact. Have you ever noticed that people who have a lot to say usually aren't saying a whole lot? Can anybody say social media? This is a world where so much is thrown out through social media. Now, social media is not all bad. We are using social media right now to reach you. But come on. Everyone posts their opinions about politics, about other people. And yes, I dare say even the pastor, the three Ps, politics, people, and the pastor. But rarely is anyone actually saying something that's worthwhile. It's just a whole lot of words. If we're truly looking to be built to last, we have to focus on the quality of our words and not the quantity of our words. Let's look over again here in Proverbs. The more you talk, the more likely you are to sin. If you are wise, you will keep quiet. Boy, this, this is, takes real discipline. The more you talk, the more you're liable to say something you shouldn't be saying. So let, let me read this out of another translation. It might be a little better. Don't talk so much. You keep putting your foot in your mouth and be sensible and turn off the flow. Uh, everybody lift your hand if you need to turn the flow off. Here, I'll put both my hands up. I don't want my words to leave people in a bad condition. I want to leave people in a better place than when I met them. You know what we need to remember? We need to remember the power of our words increases with our proximity. The closer we are to people, our words have more strength and power. If you're married, if you have children, if you have friends, I think we all understand what I'm talking about. Our words are shaping their world. Are we framing up or are we tearing down? When your spouse does something well, don't hold back. Tell her, tell him. When the kids are doing something, tell them how proud you are of them and, and how much you are believing in their future. Build up your home with your words. Think about someone you know who could use a word of encouragement and maybe someone you don't even know, just a passerby, someone in the grocery store, someone on the job, someone you've met because of your job. Be a person who leaves people better off than how you found them. It's so important that we don't allow those words to die on the altar of good intentions. Let's get the good words out. You know, you never know. Your kind words might frame up a whole new world for someone. It might change their very destiny. I know that I have done everything I know to do to practice this. Why did I have to practice it? Because it wasn't natural for me. It's not natural for anybody to speak just great, powerful spirit words. The first thing we do is check the condition of our heart. How's the soil of our heart? Then we begin to work on the foundation through scripture, through worship, all of the elements that bring that foundation together. And then we begin to build on top of that foundation, just like we did in that little demonstration today. Why? Because that's what the people are gonna see. My words are going to speak very loud. I think people have said that about their words. Words are very, very powerful. So I want to close with this scripture. Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Let's fill our hearts with the Word of God. Let's fill our hearts with worship and praise. Right now, 
people need it more than ever. You can begin to change and reframe your universe with your world. Your words are going to change everything about your future. Maybe you're out there and this message has kind of gone straight to the heart. Kind of pulled the, the, where the rubber meets the road and pulled the road up and you're looking underneath and you don't like what you see. Can I say this to you? That God loves you. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how many times you've done it or who you have done it with. I've said that many times and people have responded to me. You don't understand how broken I am or how messed up my life is. I might look fine on the outside, but on the inside, I know what I've done. I trouble myself. See, those are those reflections, those echoes coming back to us. And I want to say this to you. No matter how broken you feel, no matter how unstable you feel, insecure you feel, God takes that which is broken and he puts it back together better than before it was broken. It's his promise to you. And it all begins with a decision. And what's interesting about the decision is he says this. Are you ready? He said, if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, not your blood pump, but the center of who you are, you'll believe with your core that God is Jesus Christ and he was raised from the dead. The Bible says with the mouth you confess and with the heart you believe to salvation, to a whole new life. You see, your mouth is involved with your destiny. And what I'd like to do is give you an opportunity right now to frame up your world differently, to make a difference in your future. It will change all that is around you when you make a change. What I'd like to do is pray with you. Would you pray with me right now? I'm going to pray a prayer, and I'm asking you to bow your head, close your eyes, and follow me in this prayer. Say these words. Heavenly Father, I realize today that I need a Savior. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe He was born of a virgin. I believe that He lived a sinless life. I also believe that in my place, He died on a sinner's cross. He was buried in a sinner's tomb. But three days later, a miracle happened. We celebrate this on Easter. I believe he rose from the dead. And when he did, it was with my new life. He came to reframe my world. So with my words today, I say this. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I ask you now, Jesus, to forgive me of my sins. I receive you into my heart and today I say this about myself are you ready for this reflection say this about yourself I believe that I'm forgiven I believe that I am saved and that Jesus accepts me right now I say these last words I believe my life will never ever be the same in Jesus name come on everybody a if you prayed that prayer with us, first of all, I'd like to say welcome back to your real life. But I'd also like to say that we would love to connect with you because we don't want to leave you in the decision by yourself. We want to help you take what we call next steps. If you would just grab your device, we have a team standing by specifically waiting at this moment. And if you would text the phrase, Summit Saved to 9400. That summit saved 94000. They will be able to speak with you, get you satisfied about this decision, but also be able to get some materials in your hands and to help you to take next steps. You know, we're meeting virtually now. Usually, when we have a decision like this, we're in a group of people and we have people standing by that you can speak to personally. You know, we've all lost that human touch. But we want you to realize it is a human touch when you reach out to us because it's a human on the other side ready to answer you. We appreciate you taking the time to do that. Let us connect with you. As we get ready to shift away from this message, I again want to say we thank God for those that have given their lives the ultimate sacrifice so that I can stand here freely without fear and preach the Word of God in this awesome, wonderful country. We're shut down right now and it seems a little strange, but this too will pass. 
we will come back, and I believe as a patriot, not just as a Christian, but as a patriot, I believe we'll come back stronger. Why? Because of the examples that we've had in front of us. So we're going to close out this Memorial Day weekend message. We're going to close it out with a Memorial Day tribute. So get ready to turn up the music and listen to the worship team. And we have some really special people that are going to be involved with this tribute. God bless you. We love you so much, and we look forward to connecting with you really, really soon. forward march left face
left, face, forward, march. We just want to say thank you to the servicemen and women that helped to make Summit's Memorial Day tribute possible. Today's broadcast could not happen without your generosity. Your financial support is more important than ever in helping us to continue to make a difference at Summit Church. If you'd like to support Summit by giving, click the Give link in our live stream description box. Remember, Starting Point is this afternoon and Kids Life TV is up next. Happy Memorial Day!